Hi everyone, in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you how we can go from a static program such as this one to an animated processing program uh, using just integer division and modulo. So I've already laid the groundwork here where I've put in all the primitive shapes. If you want to pause the video and have a look for yourself, um, feel free, but it's not something I'm going to be covering with um, how I drew uh, this ninja person here. Basically the backgrounds are sky blue, um, I'm drawing some rectangles for the face, the body, the legs, and then I've got this banner here which is made up of one long rectangle here, and then the first part of the banner, and then the banner end. Um, and that's what we're going to be animating some, as you uh, may have seen before. I've also set the size um, as 400 by 400, so we're just going to start with the foundation like that. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to think about how can we animate this program? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have to count how many frames uh, we're up to. So if you didn't know, processing works at 25 frame, sorry, 24 frames per second um, as a default. And we're going to be uh, working with that. So if I just say, um, instead, I'm, I'm going to call it counter, count int counter equals zero. Um, and so every single frame, I want to update counter to be one higher. So I'm going to say counter plus plus down here. So every single frame, we're going to have counter is zero, then one, then two, then three. And we're going to be using this to figure out at what stage of the animation we want our program to look like. We also want it to um, cycle through this animation. So we don't want it to infinitely grow on forever. So if we were to, you know, start at zero and only add we're going to end up with some very big number after just a few seconds. So what we're going to do is we're going to ro um, cycle this by using counter equals counter mod um, and then how many frames. So I'm going to go 96 for now. So 96 is um, four seconds. So 24 uh, frames per second, 96 divided by 24 is four. So every four seconds, we're going to repeat our animation. This means that we're going to have frames zero all the way to 95 because when it hits 96 it's going to be zero again. The next stage here is to figure out how what sections do we need. So I'm, I'm, I'm aiming for like a three-step animation where first the head and the body moves down. So here's my little figure here just so you can visualize what I'm doing. So first I want this head part to move down the screen um, along with the body and then I want you know, uh, the first part of the banner to move down and then the third part of the banner to move down. So it kind of has this swishy wave effect. Okay, so to do that, let me just undo my little scribbles to <laughs> demonstrate. I'm going to need to set up some other variables. And these are just going to track how much of a bounce should each of these uh, sections have. So for that, I'm going to have an int called bounce. And this is just going to control the main bounce of the body. And I'm going to set that um, as default for zero. I'm also going to have another bounce that's going to be slightly more delayed than this bounce just to control that middle section of the uh, the swishy banner. Um, so I'm going to say int, uh, I know it's a messy naming scheme but it does help me understand what I'm doing. So I'm going to say first delay bounce. Um, you can have longer variables like this if it does help you understand it. Um, just for the sake of tutorial so I can talk about it, it might be a bit more helpful. I'll also make that zero and I'm going to need a last um, variable to control just the end of that banner. So if I just draw this banner again, if you imagine our little character wearing the banner, um, I'm going to have a second section and then the third section here. So this is also second section and that's also third section. So this is the original bounce. I'll just put bounce. This is the second, uh, the first bounce, and this section up here is the second bounce. Sorry for the messy handwriting. Okay, so let me just add in that other variable, second delay bounce. Okay, so we've got a system where we have a counter that goes from zero to 96. Now what we want to do is transform that so that each um, frame will trigger a different section of this animation. And that might sound a bit confusing, but let me explain. 
So if I have the regular bounce, so remember this is zero by default, um, we're just going to override it. So uh, bounce equals counter divided by 32. All right, so let's think about this. Counter starts at zero. And when we say zero divided by 32 in integer arithmetic, it's just going to equal zero. In fact, even if we have counter at one, counter at two, all the way up to 31, 30, uh, divided by 32, it's still going to equal zero. So we can think about frame one, uh, frames one through 31, including 31, um, are going to leave us with zero as our answer here for bounce. Then if we increase to 32, it's going to actually equal one. So 32 divided by 32 will give us one. And then 33 divided by 32 is going to equal one as well. So all the way from frame uh, 32 onwards to um, 63, we're going to end up with a f um, an answer here of one. Then we can do it again and we're going to realize that if we go all the way up to 95, which is the last thing that counter can be before it hits 96 and turns into a zero again, the last thing we're going to get is two. So the three things that our frames can give us as a result for bounce is zero, one, and two. Now this is excellent for us because that's three frames. Counting from zero, we got you know, um, a, a static frame where it's the original image. We got one movement that's slightly lower and then one movement that's slightly lower again. So we're actually going to do this for all three of the bounces. So um, not bounce, but first delay bounce is going to equal also counter divided by 32. And the second delay bounce is going to do the same. Now this is fine. All this is going to do is just make these variables equal 0, 1, and 2, uh, depending on what counter is. And what we want to do with these variables is we want to increase the y value so it dips down at, at um, different times of the program. So I'm going to add in when I want each part to move. So the, the head I want to move with the bounce variable. So I'm going to say rect um, in the, the head. So um, we got the x coordinate here, we got the y coordinate here. So I'm going to say the y coordinate plus bounce. So what I what else do I want to move with the head? I also want to move the body, so take the y coordinate and I add bounce to it. Um, I want the legs to say the same. The eye is going to move with the head. I don't want that staying static. That might look a bit, a bit weird. So bounce. Um, and then the last thing I want to move with the head is the top of the banner, just this, this rectangle part here. Probably a bit hard to see with my drawing software without the color, but bear with me, it will make sense. So if we add the bounce here, let's just have a have a quick look to see what happens with our program. It's very difficult to see, but we're seeing like one frame drop at a time, just that body section, and it's dropping zero frames, then one, fr sorry, not uh, frames, it's dropping one pixel, then two pixels and then back to zero pixels again. So it's kind of rotating between, um, you know, j bouncing down twice and then back up to its original stage. And we want all of those to look like that. So um, let's do that for our first delay bounce and second delay bounce as well. And I'm just gonna copy this to save some time. So the things I wanna move with that first delay bounce is just the um, upper middle part of the tail here and this lower middle part of the tail, which I've labeled here. So I'm just going to add that to the Y coordinate and compress play and test it out. Yep. So now this part is now moving and then let's add in our second delay bounce and I'm just going to copy that and I'm only going to change the tail part because I want to switch together. Okay, so our variables are all contributing to making this animation move. However, <clears throat> we are not moving in the way that we want it to. And to do that, we want things to move um, at different paces. Actually, before I do that, I just might make it a bit more noticeable so it's easier for the camera to pick up. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna amplify these, these variables to be something bigger so it's more noticeable. Um, 
that's just going to be as simple as um, the variable name. So I'll make this the first one. So first delay balance, I'm going to multiply that by five so that when the when the uh, result of counter divided by 32 is zero, we still get zero, which is fine. When it's one, we get five. And when it's two, we get 10. So instead of zero, one, two, we're gonna get zero, five, 10. And that's gonna be a bit more noticeable. So I'm gonna do that down here as well. And I'll show you what that looks like in a second. See, these, um, these movements are much bigger chunks here now. And that's what we that's the kind of effect we want okay so now we want it to move at different times and the way that I think we can achieve that is by taking our counter and just offer setting it slightly um, different from our original bounce so if this counter equals um, 38 and we say 38 divided by 32 um, then the answer we're gonna get is 1 but if I want to say um, minus 8 so offset it by just 8 frames then 38 minus eight, so 30 divided by two is gonna be zero. So it's gonna be on a different frame to the rest of them. And I will do the same for this one as well. Um, I just wanna offset it slightly so that it's gonna look like it's on a different um, animation step. And there we go. It looks like it's uh, waving in the wind. Hopefully that tutorial was uh, informative. It's just a very different way of applying um, animation using interdigit vision um, and learning how we can loop things using mod. Um, but hopefully it was enjoyable and gave you a different interesting perspective on how you can use maths and processing. Thanks.